Good morning, guys. Um, I got a little project today. I've got some raw silver samples right here. Five of them. Found these last year. It was a hidden cache. Somebody buried it. There was a remainder of maybe a cloth pouch with a clasp and some nails. So at one point there was a wooden box. I showed you guys the story of how they used to steal st silver uh, from the silver mines about an hour, hour and a half north of here. And today I'm going to give you a close look at these before I clean them. I want to clean them and see if we can make this silver shine. Apparently there is real value here. You know, 150 bucks a piece. Right up to this fancy one. I'll give you a good look at this one. Could be worth up to five, six hundred bucks, I've been told. So I believe there was just over 20 ounces uh, when we weighed all of them. Now this one here, there is a silver vein in the middle. So this part right here is silver. But then you see like a, an iron cube, you know, I mean it's made up, this isn't silver, the whole back. The silver is just this vein that runs through the middle. I'll give you guys a closer look at that. These ones here are just pure chunks of silver. There's four of those. So here is the sample. You can see right there, silver running right there and it goes around the iron and this whole nodule right here is silver sticking up you can see it running right up here so I've cleaned the first one here And you can see all the silver shining in it. This on the back, that's all silver right there. So there's the second one cleaned. And this one is pure silver, the whole thing. Now I didn't shine them up, but the more you rub them, I just took a brush and cleaned all the dirt off, you can see it's starting to shine. But I, I want to leave them kind of as natural as I can, I think. I don't know anything about, you know, <laughs> what these should look like. But I think they look better natural. Here's the third one. And I think it's the prettiest. It's got like an amethyst rock in there. You can see right there. And then these, are oh, they're like a purpley color. Very pretty. Here's the fourth one. Again, they've got inclusions and everything in them. They're really cool. Okay, and here's the last one. Brushed off, rubbed down. You can really see that silver uh, vein right there now. So I need to take these in somewhere, get them appraised. I'm not going to sell them, I'm just going to keep them, but it's nice to know the value of your finds. And I know already that by far, this is the first real treasure that I ever found. These silver pieces, somebody stole those, hid them, and then 150 years later I dug them up. Why don't you guys check out the original video of how and where I found this stolen silver cache. Good morning everybody on Frequented World. Five deer out in the field there. Back at Stan's favorite place we're going to detect here again today. Any of you guys seen treasure out there? Which part of the field should I go to? Come back! I just want directions! Ooh, shiny new gloves today. Try these out, see how they work, I don't know. They don't tend to hold up too long, these things, but we'll try them. 
So there's another homestead at the far side of the field here I want to try today. I'm going to swing around in front of there, maybe go through the bush a little bit, uh, see if we can find some old machinery and what's down at that side of the farm. Probably 800 meters from where we normally detect. I haven't had a lot of luck out on the, on the point there where we were getting all the old coins the last few times. So we're going to try somewhere new today. So way out there on that point is where we normally dig today. I'm going over that hill, way back over there. First hole of the day, an old bullet. That guy missed his shot. Whatever he was shooting at, he didn't hit. That thing didn't hit a thing. Yeah, look what I just dug. I like to make up stories, but this one actually fits. So that's a 308. If we turn around and look back where we just came from, way over there is where we found that lead. Was somebody standing here shooting that deer 50 years ago? Could have been. Deer everywhere this morning. That is not a bullet casing. A brass ring. I don't know what that would have been off of. So guys, we're asking on the forums today about the Knox 600, 800, finding coins you know, eight, nine, 10 inches. That was 11 inches right there, guys. No problem dinging off on that. And I got three inches of grass that I'm swinging through here on top. I find coins all the time, up to 10 inches. No problem with the Knox. It's actually much more powerful than my AT Pro and the AT Pro will find coins down there 10 inches. The AT Pro maxes out about 10 inches. This thing here probably has half again the power that the AT Pro does. I can find bigger sized items 20 inches down there with, with the Knox. So I'm just going to throw this out there again. Knox, Equinox, where are you guys? Where's the channel sponsorship here? I requested before. Now that we're up over 11,000 subs, you want to think about it again? I'm only going to ask so many times, guys. Come on. So on that note, we'll just also throw out there, because my channel is not sponsored by anybody, and I buy and pay for all my own gear, this guy here is seriously interested in the new Apex. I want to see some specs here from Garrett. What is this thing going to be? Even if it is a lower end machine, like guys are saying it might be a competitor for the Simplex, I might still be interested for the right price and picking one up and trying it out. Look at the old fence I found here, guys. We have never gone through any of this part of the bush. So there's just so much area to cover here. That second point out there is where I'm trying to get to today. There's a bit of brush line on the back side there, and there was a house down there. We are going to get there. I might just swing through the bush here. Look at that that can't be that old still got the blade that's still that's probably usable let's give that a cleanup I can't get the blade to retract because it's full of dirt but it is still razor sharp a little bit of cleaning when I get that home we'll have that back and work in working order here we are guys, what's left of the old 1932 foundation. One pile of stone over there and a big hole in the ground. Bit of stone here too. I guess we're not detecting the bottom of that. Looks to be about waist deep. I do see some porcelain here. Couple pieces. 
and I see a jar or glass over here piece of glass anyway oh it's broken and crystal C R Y S T huh and there's a piece of something metal right here what is that I don't know what that is Oh, that one's got some blue on it. Nice. And if my eyes don't deceive me, that looks like a crown mason insert right here on the ground. Oh, it is. Two in two days. Hey, I keep telling everybody how hard these are to find intact, but there you go. I'm taking that if I don't break it. And now I see a bunch more glass and stuff right behind where we were standing. Like right here, looks like the top. Oh, it's it's broken. But there's more. So there's some broken bits here and some more china ah oh, it's always such good pretty stuff never intact though hey that looks intact is that the lid off of some yeah look at that solid There's an old piece. Maybe we can find the bottom. So I don't know if that's the top of a candy dish or what, but I've given it a little wash down. I'm actually gonna keep that. I'm gonna throw that in my 1930s glass collection that I've got in the garage. It's uh, from the right era, and maybe there's somebody out there looking for the top. Maybe they've got the bottom. So I'm gonna save that. Yeah, so she definitely had a whole set because there's the plate that goes with the other stuff. Well, I thought I had something for Stan. He likes these old hydro friggin' heavy ceramic conductors. This one's broken. Look how thick it is in here. Even though it's springtime and there's no grass, it's still terrible. I'm thinking about throwing on the 6 inch and seeing if I can swing all around this foundation here. But I don't even know that the 6 inch can do it. It's pretty thick. Look at, look at how thick that is. That's crazy. So the foundation and my detector are somewhere in there. But look at this on the back side of the property here down by the river. All of this can be detected. And it goes way around there 200 yards to a point. So maybe we'll just, well, what's this right here? And here's a, a hole. Was that a root cellar or something? Look at the bank. That's kind of odd. And then of course we've got, look at that. As soon as I look over here in the water, I think I see China right there. Yeah, there's some pieces of china. Right there. And there's more. Wait, do we see any old 1910 quarters just lying here on top? Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> so yeah, pieces of ceramic and china all the way up the shoreline here. I just found something awesome, something really good, guys. I should mention this place is on a 1932 map, but I don't know when it was built. I found some square nails over here, so is it even older? We know the logging company started in 1880 right here using this waterway, so check this out.
I always love the big old trees and I detect around them the best that I can. Solid 17. Do you guys see that? You've seen as much as I have. Look at the intricate. It's a brooch or something. It's got a loop down here on the bottom. Yeah, look at that. I'm going to clean that up. Let's look at that. That is awesome. Top pocket find. A Bobby Dazzler. That is friggin' awesome. And it is some kind of, I don't know. Is that a brooch or... I don't think that is movable, so I don't know. But look at that. How old is that? Score! <laughs> I'll take that any day. And right here beside the where we just dug the brooch, another 17, 18, six inches over. Look it, can you guys see that? Another one, what? What? Uh, what, what? Maybe it's not a brooch, what is this? We'll clean this off. Is it the exact same? I think it is. Look at this. There it is, the second one. This one's a little bit different. So it actually has like, a hook style here on the back which loops right into that one perfectly were these meant to go together what were they there they are looped together I, I don't know if they went like that what is it there's still something down here just north of the last hole Okay, so that is the last signal we had. What is that? You know, were those things hinges on a box? Uh, is, this a, is this a latch for a box? Mystery. Well, there's a bunch of tiny curved little nails in the hole as well. Well, I don't know what that is. Solid 15. And that's the last big piece I can find in there ringing off, I think. I've been at this 25 minutes now. Let's go wash this off. I don't know what it is. I think it's junk. It's not junk. I don't think it's junk. It's a natural stone. And I think there's silver ore. I can see it sparkling and shining. It's weird. I'll show you guys a close-up. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I've got a story for you guys about silver ore. We have found multiple nuggets of raw silver. And in our research we found an article. I'm going to read that article to you guys as I do some detecting in the field later in this video. Amazing stuff. And the mystery here with this hole just deepens. Was there a box? Did they put silver ore in here? I don't know. I'll show you a close up of this. It's strange. It rings up solid 15 on the Knox. I'm not sure what the nuggets we found. I thought they rang up higher than that. No, here's another chunk of it. I'm not crazy. This rings up 15, 16. I haven't even cleaned this one off and I can see it shining. Right here, I haven't even cleaned this one off and I can see it shining down there. Weird. You can see it much better on this one. I swear that's silver. That's raw silver. Two chunks of it came out of that hole. Look at that. Now that I've brushed it off, there is no doubt you cannot deny that is a raw chunk of silver. Have I got a story for you guys. Sometimes I'm crazy guys, but I'm pretty sure somebody buried a box with brass pieces on it and raw silver in it under this tree. I don't, 
Maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but that's what it looks like to me. There's another one, an even bigger piece I just pulled out of the bottom of the hole. That one's heavy. Guys, I'm on to something here. <laughs> oh my God, look at this, guys. Each piece I pull out is bigger and more pure than the last. Oh, I get... I can't believe this. That's what it is. I can't believe it. Stan wasn't crazy. This is going to sound ridiculous, but we have suspected there was silver smuggling going on because of the rob. Like, we found big chunks of it. We thought, are they gambling with this? Were they using it at night to gamble? Uh, early logging guys using this waterway. And they were definitely, there's something to this. Two more chunks right there. Listen to this story, guys. So here's an article that we found in our research called Dipping into the Silver Stream. And this was uh, due to the fact that we had already found a couple pieces of raw silver out in that field and we couldn't figure out what was going on. I think that these guys were gambling with the silver. We found over 20 large cents, over 20 harmonicas. What else do these lumber guys have to do at night except sit around and gamble? Here's my right boot. Here's my chunk of silver. I'm all in, that kind of thing. Listen to this article. I'm just going to read this for you guys. Thanks to high grades and loose enforcement, ore theft was a booming industry in cobalt. Cobalt is only about 150 kilometers north of here. This photo here is three Ontario provincial police officers posing with silver ingots recovered from high grading operations. Most high graders were either acquitted or given light sentences courtesy of the Cobalt Mining Museum. So there's a photo of three guys and a bunch of silver. During the first few years of the silver mining rush in Cobalt, Ontario, mine owners had laid back approach to loss prevention. With claim to so much high grade ore, they freely gave samples of silver to visitors. Mine workers were also not searched at the end of the day and it was easy for the men to slip pieces of silver into their pockets. The local newspaper, The Nugget, estimated that one million worth of high-grade silver had been stolen in the first five years of the cobalt mining camp. Although several arrests were made at the time, it was almost impossible to obtain a conviction. A mine manager had to swear the stolen ore came from his mine. But since high-grade silver was consistently pure at each project, it was impossible to identify what ore came from which mine. The thieves had to be caught red-handed to be successfully prosecuted. Most high graders, as they were called, were either acquitted or given light sentences. Prior to the discovery of silver in cobalt in 1903, Ontario had not been a precious metal producing province and there were few specific laws to protect mining companies' private property, i.e. its ore. As the number of high grade ore thefts mounted, authorities sought a solution to the problem. In April 1908, John Cartwright, the Attorney General of Ontario, wrote to Federal Justice Minister Alan Allsworth regarding the situation. And in June, Cartwright suggested amending the criminal code to require those in possession of silver to have proof of ownership, but the federal, go federal government took no action. Then in December 1909, there was a high-profile robbery at the Nova Scotia Mining Company's mine in the Cobalt Camp. One man, a go-between for the robbers, admitted to having taken 17 trips to the previous few months to a small private smelter in Toronto, each time carrying 45 kilograms of ore. The thieves received only a small fine because the mine owner could not swear the ore found in the thieves' possession was his. The general practice, it was revealed after this infamous heist, was for mine, own, mine site drillers to leave small amounts of high-grade ore in the tunnels for the muckers who stored it in pre-arranged place. Fence would take the ore to Toronto in 100 and 150 pound lots. Since liquor consumption was illegal within five miles of an operating mine, numerous illegal establishments sprung up in cobalt to supply alcohol to thirsty miners and citizens. Termed blind pigs for what the drinks did to their customers, these speakeasies, often pool rooms or soft drink parlors, sometimes worked closely with high graders, shipping stolen sil silver ore to Toronto and returning north with alcohol. In some cases, the high graders did their planning and recruiting in the blind pigs. Business was very lucrative and allowed the blind pigs to meet the increasing heavy liquor fines. As the amount of available high-grade ore diminished, thieves erected small smelters in the area to purify the silver before shipping it elsewhere. 
as Canadian authorities quickly learned high grading operations were no longer limited to Toronto. Absolutely fascinating stuff. And when he sent it to me, I was like, yeah, whatever, Stan. But I think he's right. I think that's exactly what was going on here. They were smuggling or gambling or trading raw silver from the cobalt mine, which is about 150 kilometers north of here. Because there were just no restrictions. There was no uh, security at these sites. And they estimate over a million dollars was stolen or looted from that site. This qualifies as Gary's first real treasure. Yeah, I know it's stolen from somewhere, but three big pieces like this, I don't know what it'd be worth, raw silver. There might be more in the hole, I'm going back. There's more, there's another one, and there's still more down there. Four big chunks of raw silver. That blows my mind. I gotta go find Stan and tell him this story. Oh, I'm crossing the big field here going to find Stan and I'm pretty sure up at the top of that field there's a black bear. Oh yeah, that is totally a black bear up there in that top field. Luckily I'm not heading up there for a couple more hours so hopefully it just moves on. I don't see any little cubs, I just see a big bear so now, if I can't find Stan, then it becomes a problem. <laughs> Maybe it's up there snacking on Stan. On. Glasses are on. Mind is turned on. Okay, verify what is this. Well, it's obviously melted something, but is it silver? You'd have to test it, buddy. It's pretty raunchy. That's raw silver. It's, it, it could well be. So those nuggets are ringing up solid 76 on the AT, or sorry, the 400. That's silver, man. I know it is. Stan says he's tired. I couldn't figure out why. Then I saw the pile of brush. He's in here chainsawing for three hours, cleaning out the foundation. Look at how clean that is now. All so that he can detect right here. And then he said, I'm too tired to detect. You go ahead. <laughs> we, have, we have other things to go like that. <laughs> I already did the bottom of that with the Knox. He doesn't stand a chance. If it was junk, I left it there. That's what he's going to find with the 400. Watch my detectors right there. <laughs> All right, fine. Okay, throw away. Get a movie of this mountain. Shit down here. So there's a whole bunch of crap, and we don't know something's been living under this slab right here. That right there is all poop. Pretty big poop too, eh? I don't know what that is. <laughs> now, do you get any cruder bucket than that? No, that's old school. Look at that. Look at the handle. Twisted wire. I'm just waiting to see if whatever's been living down there all winter is still in there. If it comes out and gets you by the leg. It's not Sasquatch, Gary. Don't get your hopes up. Mystery solved. I just had to try one. It's porcupine poop. That's what it is. I knew I'd seen that before. Couldn't figure it out, though. You need, you need flavor. <laughs> I think you could probably outrun a porcupine stand. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And here is the brick pile. All that remains that old... 1930 whatever homestead right beside a real nice gnarly old tree Persistence. what do you got largey my friend largey first one of the day yeah Can't probably last one of the day seeing as we're packing up to leave <laughs> yeah 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 
Maybe I'll stay for a while. I gotta get this on film. He finally started carrying a brush instead of bringing them to me to brush off. <laughs> I can't read it. Maybe you can get it. Nineteen sixteen. Okay, raw silver. Meet Mr. Scale. Geez, half an ounce right there. One point four. 2.3, and now the big guy, 4.23 ounces. I will do a quick conversion as of today's price for silver and show you what we raked in today on the hunt. According to today's price, silver is $21.16 an ounce. So times that by 4.23 ounces, we get $89.50.